Hello, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage here at the NYSC. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. Of course, we're here at the NYSC New York Stock Exchange floor. It's theCUBE's new East Coast studio in collaboration with NYSC Wired Community. Anand is here, who's the, heads the AI Ex Center of Excellence for ICE. Anand, great to see you. We had lunch the other day with some big time customers. I can't say their name, very confidential. Um, great to have you back. You're like a regular guest now on theCUBE. You're like an analyst for us. Yeah. Um, you see a lot of people, but you're also involved in a lot of the tech and security involved here at ICE, mm -hmm. parent company for NYSD. Right. Um, you're in a very unique position. You're yeah. building tech, you're a practitioner. Yeah. You're managing and securing in your entire operation. Yeah. But you're also talking to vendors all the time yeah. for many reasons. One, they're going public on the New York Stock Exchange, but also you're looking, sourcing opportunities to yeah. be a customer. Yeah. So you get like the best of both worlds. Yeah. Kind of a celebrity. <laughs> I, I I love the access to this company and the ideas, you know, and, and that gives us also idea to build something new. So all good, all good. So Learn. you see, what what's hot out there? I know you talk to hundreds of companies a week. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you get in-depth briefings. Um, yeah. And they share some secret sauce with you. I know you can't, you sign NDAs, you really can't go into great detail on some of the companies. Mm -hmm. But if you could share with the categorical top three areas you see activity where there's needle moving opportunities, what would be those three areas? To my uh, uh, knowledge and basically where I see the technology movement that happens, right? Anytime you see uh, people talk about the large language model and generative AI and what they see as the product, but what I uh, notice is that how these products are being built, right? So the data that goes into the large language model so there are very interesting companies who are trying to streamline the data, you know, taking many sources of data and creating streamlined pipelines. Um, I met a company yesterday, you know, it just blew my mind what they're doing uh, in terms of data. And they are providing data to the um, large language model trainers, you know, or basically OpenAI or, you know, uh, Llama, Meta and things like that. Um, so that's one aspect. The other aspect is all the infrastructure that they needed to be built, right? So there are layers of companies who are uh, working on that uh, space, uh, optimizing hardware, memory, chipset, you know, storage, you know, there are many companies you know, who are there. Uh, I love that space because uh, invariably any improvement that happens, it helps in general for trading, you know, or any other processing. So that's a positive side effect that I see, you know, next generation of compute and everything will be evolving. Uh, the last thing is anybody who has a platform uh, to scale, you know, the, those are the companies, you know, who are going to, uh, at the end of the day, going to benefit a lot because the large language models will keep changing or keep iterating. You know, we have seen a huge change in the last one year, but all these things and the, one of the other things I, I can tell you that Oclo is a company which got listed here uh, which is built uh, solving the power problem you know by bin, building these uh, nuclear reactors you know the small scale nuclear reactor which are localized for powering the data center. Which company was that? Oclo. Okay cool. Uh, and um, uh, we saw Jetcool. Jetco. Jet, yeah, they've yeah. got innovative solutions out of MIT. Correct. So yeah. basically those kind of things, you know, cooling solutions to <laughs> energy solving solutions to network devices, uh, storage, you name it. So uh, that fascinates me more than uh, the, what's out there on the internet. And uh, I got to say, getting to know you, you're, um, you're a very curious person, but you're very entrepreneurial. I can see it in your eyes. And one of the things I, I share with you from a value standpoint is that it really is a great time to be an entrepreneur right now. If you look at the opportunities, you're seeing some real accelerated venture development across the world, India, here in the US. Now we have a global landscape, the UN's here. Um, this world's going to change really fast because yeah. you can get up, get up to speed with critical escape velocity yeah. very quickly right now. Yeah. If you can get a needle moving opportunity to take that lever and, and go straight vertical up like a hockey stick right out of the gate without a lot of capital. Yeah. So if you hit the formula right with AI and some of the technologies coming together, yeah. there is a confluence of these trends where if the stars align, yeah. and you don't have to go through the normal process to go through venture capital. You can yeah. just hit it right out of the yeah. gate and hit a home run. Yeah, yeah, and many many companies are doing that bootstrapping, you know, with nothing, literally a couple of developers and you can put something out there kind of thing. I see many of the companies starting like two or three months, you know, they have a product out there. So that's fascinating. There are many uh, 
tools and platform coming together to build let's say web website or an application you know and uh, all these large language model providers have made apis available so that's fascinating like open ai is right <laughs> at the top you know um, so many companies are evolving like that so yeah I, I see a fascinating time and a movement you know uh, we'll see what happens in the next year but uh, i have never seen the technology movement like this. I was life. talking to a friend the other day and uh, there was an old expression, you go back a couple decades, a couple cycles ago, uh, and it stood around for a while, it was called, oh, that entrepreneur, he's throwing spaghetti against the wall to see what sticks. It's kind of an old expression, because yeah. he throws spaghetti, it sticks to the wall or it doesn't. Yeah. It's either it's ready or it's not. And so it's also a metaphor for you trying too many things. I don't really have, I don't yet know what my product market fit is. And, and that was a shotgun approach, um, except the risk was so high because yeah. you can't do all those things. You can't, quote, boil the ocean over, as they say, yeah. uh, in, in startup uh, nomenclature. But now you can. Yeah. You can actually throw a lot of spaghetti at the wall right now with agents, with technology, because yeah. you can stop, start yeah. very quickly now. Yeah. I know you and I have chatted briefly about this, but this is now the new flywheel that is, because the data is accelerating so fast into yeah. the market, the yeah. arbitrage opportunity of data, the acceleration and enablement of data is creating a new dynamic and we're seeing just so many examples of this. Uh, how do you, what's your reaction to that and do you have anything you want to add to that? Because I think this is a new trend we're seeing, which is it's an entrepreneurial equation that's different than we've seen before, yeah. net new. I mean, these other iterate fast, go you know, lower yeah. cost to get a server, that's cloud, but yeah. now with the data, yeah. you can move even faster. Yeah, and uh, I mean, at the core of it, the ability to solve problem or look at the problems and have a solution in mind, uh, now is the time where the implementation has been fast-tracked, you know, but I mean, the way I see it is that there, there is a problem you need to identify and the solution. Um, everything else has become easier these days. Uh, but copycat too, you can look at someone else and say, oh, there. Yeah. I don't need to be first, I can just yeah. need to be second and faster. Yeah. So, like, but but one, one other thing I would suggest is that understanding a little bit of details of the technology, uh, because pretty quickly the cost and, and the maintenance becomes an uh, overhead. So keeping an eye on how it can be done to scale, that's what we are doing. You know, we understand all the uh, lower level detail before we get into something. Um, so we are taking the platform first approach to make sure. The ICE platform. Yeah, so basically uh, we, we want to make sure that all the benchmarking is there, all the ground truth for any of the things are uh, established before we roll out anything, you know. So the testing system is super yeah. important. and. That's another uh, opportunity for many companies to build a testing platform. Well, let's talk about ICE for a second. I, yeah. you, um, what is, how would you describe your environment? Obviously, your infrastructure is pretty rock solid. You guys got good security practice. So I don't want to go there. It's pretty much yeah. you know, good. So check. But what are you enabling for AI? As you look at AI opportunities, you're seeing uh, new ways to innovate operationally, mm -hmm. um, increase your better, increase your security posture but also generate new value. We heard productivity gains from Glean was in here. They were on the show floor. I saw the yeah. logo lighting up on the big board here in the NYSE. The founder there was doing enterprise search, walked in, now he's got this awesome enablement. Yeah. Um, the productivity is enabling companies yeah. to finding stuff to move the needle just in their jobs. Yeah. What do you see ICE doing that's going to be enablement for your people who yeah. work there, but also your customers? Uh, look, ICE uh, is a global uh, financial organization, right? So we have data services, you know, uh, exchanges, clearing houses, and mortgage technology. Uh, and what we do, right, is optimize, remove the manual labor, and create value out of it. That's uh, has been one of the core concept we have at lower cost, and how do we create uh, profitability out of that? With AI, uh, that is even better these days. So we are focused on streamlining all these initiatives, you know, but. Um, what we are basically setting up is uh, how do we take all this feature and provide it to customers. You know, behind the scene, we are building that platform so that we can scale rapidly, experiment, and uh, my job is to create a collaborative environment where ideas can come up uh, from uh, across the company. You know, and then we provide a solution, we build, and we scale. Uh, so that's what we are doing at ICE, and uh, a lot of new things will be is, uh, put pretty soon be announced uh, you know, as we go into the next year. How's your center of excellence going? You guys feel good about some of the cross-pollination and best practices being developed? You guys feel good about your experiments and your approach to AI? Yeah, I mean, uh, going pretty well. Uh, 
people ask you what the center of excellence, uh, those kind of things. So, uh, it's excellent. <laughs> it's the center of all the action. <laughs> no, our, our idea is that, look, uh, you need to understand what it takes to build an AI system. Yeah. Uh, unlike, unlike the typical AI influencers on the internet, they don't talk about all the details that goes into building an yeah. AI pipeline. So we do all the right thing, like uh, I have been saying, that understanding little bit of uh, details of systems and what it takes to build the AI system. and. Uh, uh, you know, so we do that thing. Yeah. And, and I There's a lot of practitioner work that you're putting in. I think, what you tell, highlight your point, just if you don't mind me, yeah. I'll pause in there because I think it's worth mm -hmm. expanding, is that you have to be a practitioner now yep. to understand how it works. Yep. It's like playing chess if you don't know what checkmate looks like. You've got to know yeah. the game you're yeah. in, and you've got to take some time to yeah. get some workable projects to see some end-to-end -end action. Yep. Right, right. Yeah, you, you uh, touched the right point. And, um, I mean, we have been doing that, and many people reach out to me, how do we learn AI, you know, how do we get into AI? <laughs> and uh, the chief scientist who built the DBRX model at Databricks, he, he told me, we were sitting together, and he said, like, he tells people that you just build something, you know, mm -hmm. just start, get started and have a benchmarking solution. Uh, those were two insightful input, you know, and uh, we have been doing that at scale, you know. Yeah. Uh, identify use cases, train the people, upskill as you go, and, and set up the benchmarking solutions for yeah. each of the things so that we can scale. Yeah. You know, it's interesting here, what I love about coming to New York, and it's the intersection of business and technology. We had some folks in town from the Bay Area, um, the CEO, co-founder of RoboFlow. They do computer vision, but very developer-focused, the biggest libraries out there. Uh, he's a younger generation. You're in the middle of a very big organization at ICE, but the game is still the same. They're looking at it, they're engineering. Mm -hmm. They're um, they're not old, just old school system guys like us who know distributed computing. Yeah. We are living in the biggest renaissance of digital um, distributed computing, yeah. um, systems architecture, yeah. software, yeah. and large scale problem solving. Yeah, I mean that is attracts anyone who's yeah. who, who's smart, wants to be curious, wants to solve hard problems. Right. AI is just the application software of that right. and or combination of the system architecture. Correct. So I think this is where I think where you, I, you guys are getting it right is that you guys are looking at it from what's the architecture, infrastructure capability, yeah. and then what's the software environment going to look like that's novel for us making application change. Correct. I mean, Gen AI is an application feature. Yeah. Okay, the system scale is a <laughs> infrastructure feature. Correct. It's old school hardware, middleware, app. I mean, yeah. it's the same stack. Yep. It's just got different like slices and Correct. dices. Correct. Uh, explain your thoughts on this. I think no, you, you, I think you agree, but this is important to simplify yeah. and then uh, look at it. Correct, that, that, that's correct, and any application you build, you have the hardware, and you have the software, <laughs> and you have the requirement, and you test system, and things like that. It's a little more complicated with AI and Gen AI because the data is heavily involved, so it becomes a little more complex, and it is expensive, so to run each of the iteration, keeping track of each of the iteration and yeah. benchmarking, uh, and and whoever is doing it right and more streamlined way, they are going to win yeah. eventually uh, without uh, a huge cost. Uh, other thing that I can think of is that it will produce a lot more data, you know, <laughs> and there will be another industry to uh, keep yeah. track of the data and, you know. Yeah. It's so funny, data is the new middleware. I've always said that for years. Dave and I always riff on this. If you look at the action, the, the data business, mm -hmm. outside of the folks who specialize in data, certainly exchanges have a big data focus, but like, even then they were built on monolithic old school legacy yeah. systems. But outside in the classic enterprise, it was a department, an area of an analytics, you had a warehouse, it was all good, we validated, it's like yeah. crown jewels are in there, don't touch it, yeah. it's, um, queries, get a report, yeah. who cares what's late, there's no real time dashboard, and then, but in comes data science, okay, great, yeah. but now you've got data engineering going on. Yeah. I think one distinction in this platform engineering transition to setting the table for Gen AI is that there's real data engineering being discussed, yeah. meaning not just databases, but like, databases in context to the system. Yeah, Correct. This is new, I mean, yeah. not new, but like only the big guys did that, like yeah. like the banks who have, yeah. you know, make money on trades and <laughs> ICE. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, look, many of the companies when the AI wave happened, right, they started getting into the space of how do we organize our data to use it and whoever has organized or started organizing much ahead of time, they are right there, right up there yeah. to release something, you know. 
uh, Spotify, which is listed here, you know, when they, they are one of the... Yeah. I, I they use like Data Gray there, Data Gray yeah, to come. They, yeah, they so recommendation engines, personalization. Yeah. I mean, I, I like the new virtual DJ pops up. Hey, yeah. a, I saw that, maybe I'm on the bait. I don't know if anyone got that, but that was pretty cool. Yeah, um, so Spotify, uh, I mean, they have one of the best uh, data tech stack, which is there for their search, and I have done extensive research on that and read their technical documents, and. They have done something right, and uh, you know. So, so what I'm getting to is that that data organization yeah. has become a more focused point right now. Yeah. Uh, access to the data. So the industry right now, you know, whoever has traditional and antiquated data solution, like you know, are thinking like a data lake and yeah. Apache Iceberg, and you know. Yeah. All these different companies. As the Glean guy pointed out, yeah, Spotify is a little bit different use case. They have a lot of data, not a lot yeah. of legacy system, but enterprise have. You know, different systems, different identity access. So, a little, you know, the Spotify is a great example that the enterprises want to get to. Yeah. And companies like Glean are working on that. Yeah. What's the coolest thing you've seen in the past couple of weeks? What, if you pick one conversation, you, know, you can name the company or not name the company. You can you can just categorically talk about it. What is, what is the coolest thing you've seen in the past couple of weeks? I mean, uh, coolest thing always is if somebody can build a decision engine. Using AI, uh, I have seen something where literally uh, decision can be made using AI. You know that that to me is super cool. Um, I understand what it takes to build that. Uh, you know, so um, that that is. You saw the level of difficulty. Yeah. And to get that wasn't a fake demo; it was legit. Yeah, I mean we have attempted once uh, <laughs> ourselves. So uh, you know, basically. We understand what it takes to make uh, that, you know, not that we are going to use that or roll out that, but uh, we did a full-blown experiment to put different AI models together to make it yeah, a decision, and uh, that's that's something super cool. And uh, great to see you. We're, we're at time here, we got to run. Uh, we're going to the 11th hour, the exchange is empty. Um, if I keep going, I could compete with Mad Money down there and go, <laughs> just keep going. We'll have a marathon, we'll have a, we'll have a bake off. <laughs> Who can go longer? <laughs> Great to see you. Good to see you too. Thanks. Really a pleasure working with you. Thanks. Okay, thank you for watching. I'm John Furrier here at the NYSC, the new location for the NYSC Wired community with theCUBE coming together, building out our East Coast hub here. Thanks for watching.